Thumbing through the money, bad bitch on the counter. Throw that ass back, cause you know I'm about to pound her. Ass fat, gotta smack it. Gas in the blunt, so I'm not tryna match it. Didn't know the price, so you know we gotta tax them. Flexing on the ground, so you know we gotta whack them. Stacking through the winter, cause we fucking up the summer. Niggas ain't really getting money, that's a bummer. We get them racks, like, what? Hey, for some reason, uh, when I say certain things, it come off like I'm being flirty or seductive. So with that being said, um, I'm going to say something and y'all tell me if it sounds like um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off like strong or whatever, or I'm coming off like, uh, yeah. I'm about to say it. How you doing? Does that does that does that sound like a regular how you like how you doing? Does it, it sounds like I'm just talking, right? Or does it sound like I'm coming off like I'm trying to like yeah, like I try, I'm about like yeah, like I'm gonna say it again. How you doing? Does that does that come off flirt flirtatious? Huh? Does it come off sexual? I hope not, because, I don't know. Just saying. Stop! Don't. The world can be a cold and harsh place for the living. And as these paranormal explorers came to find, the same can be said for the afterlife. Number five, there's a YouTube channel called The Ghosts of Mississippi that goes to great lengths to debunk supposedly paranormal hotspots. You may remember an incredible video of theirs what the hell? analyzed at the Wolf oh, in Clovis, yeah. California. I remember which that. Which a cross pushes itself through the floor. Anyway, the point is these paranormal investigators aren't afraid to travel across the nation for a good investigation And that's the kind of dedication that makes their channel the real deal with that said There's another series of haunting videos of theirs that I want to focus on Ones that center around a haunted church that's in their home state a place they've investigated often on December 19th 2019 they enter the church and begin addressing any spirits nearby they apologize for the condition of the church and show genuine sympathy then after establishing a certain level of trust they make a small request of anything listening i just make one loud noise Of course, he could have just dragged his own foot across the floor to make the sound. So this alone isn't conclusive evidence of a ghost. But when they get out the spirit box and start asking questions, they get two clear answers. Here's the first. All right, do you want to speak to me now? Oh, you good. All right, enough said. He pretends not to understand. There's a second note that sounds like it's not coming from the spirit box, but from a row of pews further back. Yes? Ah. Oh. Even if the spirit box is a little more than random responses from radio airwaves, the odds of hearing note twice and in perfect timing with a question are slim to none in my opinion. Hey. Can you make a noise? Nope. Can you say something? Nope. Can you come here? Nope. Can you cluck me? Yup. <laughs> Just begin to dance all around, and then it gives a name, which I can barely hear, so I'm not so sure about this one. Kevin, I heard that. This follow-up cry for help, however, is about as clear as can be, and I think it's creepy how it waits an appropriate amount of time to reply, and I don't think the orbs dancing all around are a coincidence. Then there's a strange shadow figure in the stall seen at around nine minutes Is this Kevin the spirit or is this the thing that Kevin was asking for help against? Just a couple weeks later on January 5th, 2020, they return to the church for a closer Holy shit! This time, as one of them kneels down to look at the mirror It took me a minute The image of an evil entity forms before their very eyes Jesus God damn You all see that mother clucking? 
they don't you, face you, 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 you cheats. On the right side of the mirror is what they describe as a demonic image peeking in. You can see its hands raised, and if you pause at three seconds, there's also two eyes and a small open mouth. When he stands up, the figure disappears and does not return. Oh my god. Of course, this could simply be a dirty mirror, but according my to ass. the investigator kneeling down, he felt something grab his hat, and when they shine their light on the mirror to try and recreate it, they can never make the figure return. Roaming cold spots begin to pass over them, and they decide to leave before anything else happens. But on the way out, I hear a hiss at 1 minute and 11 seconds. <laughs> And as they reach the final room, they hear a warning sound from deeper within that I have no explanation for other than the paranormal. This sounds like no animal I have ever heard, and I can practically hear the hate in his guttural growl. They search for the source of the growl for just a moment longer, and then decide to get out of there fast. With so many sounds and sightings in such a short period of time, I have little doubt that something horrifying lurks within these walls. Its very existence is a defilement of this location, but perhaps that's exactly why this demonic force has chosen to make this place its new home, and I doubt it's leaving anytime soon. Number 4. Steve Richards and Jason Griffiths make up the Ouija Brothers, a fearless ghost hunting duo from the English Midlands. What makes them different from most Woo! Thank you for anybody that said bless you. Um, the Ouija brothers. You might as well replace Ouija with cluck. I hate when one nostril is like stuffed, stuffed up, stuffed up, stuffed up. No, stuffed stuff. Yeah. It's just that, like, that left nostril, which is, ah, oh, man. But the other one is good. Like, air can get into it, in and out. And this one is just stopped. No, see, not a... Ouija Brothers. No matter what they do in life, no matter what they... Yeah, no matter what they do, who they with, where they going, they always gonna be clucked. And that's for life. The Ouija brothers? Like just that name alone is just enough for me to be like, nah, you got that. The Ouija brothers. Can you imagine somebody name somebody last name being Ouija? That you 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 man yo your last name Ouija oh my god that's crazy it's like you're born with <sighs> aside from their bravery is that they are more skeptical and often set out to debunk famous haunted locations rather than promote them with that said they may have met their match at shepton mallet prison built in 1610 shepton mallet prison is the oldest prison in the country and also was the longest running until its closure in 2013. Wow. four centuries of brutal treatment have since created wow. hostile spirits who were for the most part already not good people to begin with so much horror has happened here that a strange feeling of negative energy is said to have washed over the very walls themselves and it isn't long before the Ouija brothers, despite their usual level-headedness, find themselves looking over their shoulder and questioning every sound. Sure, any building that's centuries old is bound to make some really creepy noises, and some of what they record just sounds like the foundation setting and stuff like that. But other encounters, like what happens here only two minutes into their investigation, seems to be in response to a very specific question. Are you upstairs? I agree with them that it's coming from somewhere above, but let me know if you do too. Whatever's following them, it seems to prefer to have a height advantage at all times. But check this part out at 8 minutes and 25 seconds. Jason actually looks up a split second before he hears the noise. So did they plan this and he messed up? Or did he sense it moments prior?
Hey, what's up, buddy? I'm right in front of you. They found a particularly haunted Is that you? To explore, the Ouija brothers walk past each cell, encouraging anything inside to come forth, and they gently coax the spirit into revealing itself. Ski is too busy looking straight ahead and misses the light anomaly appear against the wall right next to him. I fully admit that it could be their camera equipment, but it never happens again a single time. And get this, the light appears at the exact same moment. Jason wanted to know if the spirit remembers what life was like at Shepton Mallet Prison. If you wish it to was come ass. Out, knock on the door that you want to come out of. Do you remember? Neither of them see this though, and so unaware that it's already worked, Jason continues to talk to the spirit about how the prison guards were able to go home. Well, they had to stay here, and out comes the loudest bang of all. Whoa, what was that? It was a bang! They get out the electromagnetic meter to try and measure air currents for paranormal activity. Nothing happens at first, but then it beeps loudly and turns green for a long time. They can't get the meter to do it again, and are trying to figure out if this was a glitch when they are interrupted by something scary mid-sentence. I'll enhance the audio to make it easier to hear. Same very long, didn't it? Why he looking at him like that? All I'm saying. This pollen, bruh. Oh, the God is pollen. You know, it's weird. They said that this pollen. It's the worst it has ever been. I, re I believe that because I haven't been allergic to pollen since I was a kid. Like a little, little kid. This is the first time the pollen is bothering, bothering me since I was a small kid. Oh my God. But yeah, why is he looking at him like that, bro? And like I was about to say, but what I'm not about to say, but what I am going to say, what I'm just saying, but not really saying, is that he is in cahoots. He been tattooed this whole time, this whole video. So why is he looking at him like that? He's looking at him like he about to clock him up. Just look. Why is he looking? Bruh, the way what? he's looking at him. Why is he looking at him like that? So clocking Jesus. It's a small muffled voice from far away, so tiny and distant that it shouldn't have even registered on camera, not with that heavy door closed behind them, and yet it reaches their ears with alarming clarity. They agree it's a woman, but still they are unable to pinpoint its exact location, and when they go outside, the prison is as empty as ever. According to legend, this could be the voice of one of the oldest prisoners, a woman known only as the woman in white. She is said to have taken the life of her fiancé and passed away in 16 1680 from regret now she wanders the a and b wings moaning her sorrows and as they are searching for her the electromagnetic reader they left behind goes crazy once again indicating that while well, they may have left the room perhaps she is not and the reason why they were able to hear her so clearly was because her ghostly presence had been standing not in another room but behind them all along number three connor biddle and india hopwood are a ghost hunting team who travel to different haunted locations in search of paranormal encounters, which coincidentally is the name of their channel on YouTube. Born in Indiana, Connor released a full-length paranormal documentary in 2012 and has never stopped investigating. His partner, India, moved to South Carolina from England and has been visiting haunted locations since she was 10 and began heading investigations as a teenager. They have nearly two decades of combined experience dealing with the afterlife between them and a lot of of interesting evidence to share. This time they find themselves in Withville, Virginia to explore the infamous Octagon Mansion. I am in the Octagon Mansion alone. The only thing I can see is what's on this night vision camera. 
built in 1870, the Octagon Mansion, or the Roundhouse as some call it, has a relatively unexplained haunted history. Many families lived here over its 100 plus year history, and it was also a few different businesses for a while, what the fuck? none of which lasted for some reason. Why is that right there? The town itself once experienced a viral outbreak that took over 100 lives, and this may have tainted with Phil with many restless spirits. With that said, it should come as no surprise what? that what? What is that? Phil is said to be on the second floor. Bro, is that a. You don't even have to clear that image. That is a whole doll right there in the middle of the floor. No, I'm not clubbing with it. I'm not. You, so his friend, I think his friend has been, uh, Messing with paranormal paranormal activity since they they were ten since you were ten years old ten what was your parents doing were they not around did did they just let you do whatever the hell you, they want wanted you to do huh they didn't care nothing they didn't care about you whatsoever like just so long as you was happy you was good. Day was good. Since you were 10 years old? You know what I was doing when I was 10? I was getting one off. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> no, I was... What was I doing? What, what grade was I in? What is it, elementary? Elementary school? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think elementary school, I think. Either elementary school or middle school. I don't know. No, elementary school. Yeah, I was definitely playing games. And um, doing kid shit. At 10 years old. I was definitely not doing this or even thinking about this paranormal. Especially considering the outbreak targeted kids, as Connor is exploring the first floor, his camera goes out of focus a second before he senses something nearby. There's nothing to make it go out of focus, and yet the background changes as if someone is standing right in front of him. Wow. Is anybody here? Right in front of me. like this for 11 full seconds before snapping back into focus for no reason at all. And this noise happens a few seconds after coming into focus, almost like an invisible left the shot and went into a different room. The soft knocking is repeated again when he leaves a doll out for the girl to play with and pay attention to the exact location of the doll because that's going to matter in just a second. But for now, it sounds like the girl might be coming downstairs to give the toy a closer look. So the doll is positioned in front of the furthest right window here at 2 minutes and 27 seconds. Right. But at 4 minutes oh. and 25 seconds, it's now by the far left window with its arms raised to its mouth like it's afraid. Now Connor says he isn't sure if the doll moved or if it was just the camera angle. I think it definitely moved, but the fact that he doesn't rush to take credit makes me respect his work that much more on a different night. Connor and India think they record a spirit named Nina. Does this sound like a person or electronic interference? <laughs> I respect that India is able to keep complete. Yeah, wow. So those are the same one, two, and three. Those three people are the same ones that because that paranormal scream just happened and loud as hell. And they they just they they just right there just still recording themselves. Those are the those are the same ones that are gonna record themselves as they're getting clucked. No condom necessary. Sure. My reaction was more like Connor's. 
She must have really seen a lot as a ghost hunter for this not to bother her. Anyway, this sounds like a scream of pure agony in my opinion. There's not any hatred in the voice, just pain. Perhaps a final scream from the girl upstairs. And if you didn't think the last sound was human, this one definitely is a woman's cry. Wow. India is able to translate quite easily. I believe it really does say hey here, like she says. Hey, say hey again. And the reason I believe it is because the ghost says hey again. As for physical sightings, this is the best piece of evidence Connor has to offer. It's all real. Every bit of it. This 2012 video, taken in Bourbon, Indiana, in the attic of an old pizza place that used to be an apartment building, highlights a strange anomaly hovering against the wall. It doesn't look like the beam of a flashlight because, aside from not being round, there's no ray of light connecting it to a source, and when the white outline moves off the wall, it does not change size or shape like a flashlight would, instead staying completely the same as it traverses the darkness. Number 2. Over a year ago, I briefly touched on the saga of Joseph Chan Sloan, a YouTuber who for years was haunted by a spirit from 2011 to 2014. Oh my god! Damn! He was on your ass from what, 2011 to 2014? Bruh! I know you had sleepless nights. I know your asshole was just... I'm, I'm so sorry. For this whole story, three more videos in particular are worth getting into. But first, I did some more research and discovered a blog with years worth of updates. Joseph first noticed an apparition within weeks of letting his girlfriend move into his apartment. So I suspect she may have brought something that had attached itself to her. That he son of a bitch. felt constantly watched, especially in the shower of all places. And it got to the point where they both thought they were getting pranked by each other. But one day, as Joseph was taking a shower, he heard his girlfriend come into the bathroom. The topic was already on his mind. Mind. So he explained to her that he thought the apartment was haunted, but then the figure on the other side, the one who he thought was his girlfriend, disappeared mid-explanation. From that point on, Joseph began setting up his soul camera in different places to document the spirit, and that's when things ramped up to the next level. On April 16th, 2012, Joseph announces out loud to whatever's listening that he's turning in for the night. So we're just going to film this area. I had, like I said, my lighting issues were horrible, so I'm leaving some lights on this time. So if there is anything, hopefully we'll catch it. Anyways, guys, have a good night. See you in the morning. Orb activity begins at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, carries on for about 6 seconds, and then abruptly stops. The kitchen is eerily quiet for over 40 seconds, and then the stovetop burner turns on to its highest setting. What the hell? It out of nowhere at the 3 minutes and 17 seconds mark. But at 3 minutes and 14 seconds, an orb shows up in front of the oven just 3 seconds before it turns on. Could this be the ghost in question caught on camera? Joseph was asleep, so this event could have burned the whole place down if anything was still on the That's burner, what I'm saying. Which is maybe what this ghost was trying to do all along. A full seven months later, on November 28th of that same year, Joseph puts the camera up on a high ledge to show as much of his living room as possible, floor to ceiling. He again announces that he's going to bed and turns out the lights. It's 11.46 p.m. Anyways, uh, let's see what we get and if we get anything. So, uh, I'll see you all in the morning and, uh... Everything looks normal for roughly two minutes until a shadowy movement materializes over by the entertainment center. It's hard to notice even when circled, but when you do see it, it looks way out of place. I don't think it's camera pixelation because none of the other darker areas of the room are moving like this. And at approximately two minutes, a large lonesome orb floats upwards from that part of the room and disappears. Wow. There's some definitely something in your in your apartment. 
Exactly 10 minutes later, at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, this speaker falls over and lands not too far from where the orb originated from. Obviously, no one is around to knock it over. So if this is fake, how was it done? On October 1st, 2013, Joseph made his final YouTube video, letting everyone know he has moved to a new apartment. He thinks that changing his location has stopped the spirit. Hell no! Nah. It may have attached itself to his girlfriend when she first moved in. I'm not so sure it worked. This part at 4 minutes and 30 seconds further proves my point. It could be his camera making a squeaking noise while being adjusted, but it sounds a lot like the laughter of a small child. But, anyways... <laughs> hey, hey, my eyes. And when you compare it to his normal laugh, it's definitely not the same voice. <laughs> And that's pretty much the last anyone's ever heard from him. The last update comes from his blog on July 25th, 2014, promising more videos that sadly never came. I don't know what happened to him. No one does. But suddenly dropping off at the height of your fame is not reassuring to say the least. It makes me wonder if something terrible happened. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next five seconds? Because I upload four new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Vadim Vadimich is a Russian YouTuber who often explores the radioactive remains of Chernobyl, an abandoned power plant that went into meltdown during the 1980s. On this journey, he and his friends find an abandoned daycare center that seems quite haunted. One of the first things they find are two dolls. One is headless and the other has poked in eyes, shaded black all around as if someone was pressing down aggressively hard as they scribbled. It's not a welcoming sign, but could just be the work of some edgy teens, or maybe even someone in their own group, so they press on. Across from the dolls is this picture of a Russian team all huddled around a strange object in the center. I don't know what this is in the middle, so someone help me out because it might be a clue. I assume this was a picture of the kids who used to come here before the meltdown. Who knows how many, if any, actually made it to adulthood due to the radioactive exposure. Immediately behind the photo is a creepy old picture of a Russian woman in full uniform crying. I don't understand the significance of this picture, but I feel like they are saying something important here. So translate this part from Russian to English if you can. <laughs> After a while, it becomes apparent that they are all being watched. These white eyes first appear on the other side of a window at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I thought it was just his light, until I realized the light is hitting his chest and shouldn't be visible behind him at all. And here at 3 minutes and 52 seconds, the eyes appear again in a doorway, much closer. It's just for a split second, but I mean, whose flashlight looks like that? Nobody's that I know. Those look like eyes for sure. Glowing ones at that. They come across a portion of building they've explored before, but this time the door is partially opened, so they cautiously step inside. The first thing I notice were these floating eyes at 7 minutes and 56 seconds. They look exactly the same size and shape as the ones before, but what they saw was the top of someone's head, someone incredibly tall and standing totally still. Standing motionless is a figure, with a blacked out face and long white garbs. They run away and soon encounter it again. Its white clothes somewhat resemble the doll clothes we saw earlier. Could that have been a warning? When it gets close to them, it seems shorter than before, but impossibly broad-shouldered and powerful looking. I don't know why they let it get this close, but I guess they were frozen in place from fear and tired from running. I hope this was just a mannequin or something, but when it does this, I know it's far from a prop. Dumbasses. Really? The, the sound effects back inside, and now Cornered eventually resorts to smashing through a window and takes a risk climbing through broken glass just to get away from whatever they just saw. So I think it's real. Reddit can be one of the scariest places on the internet if you know where to look. And trust me, I do. Also, my new song, Stuck at Home, is out. But please, don't listen to it. What's the point of our, of saying that you have a song when you say don't listen to it? Are you trying to mess with people's minds? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, so, I hope 
that all paranormal activity channels on YouTube go away. Um, because best believe if I was in charge of YouTube and there was a channel out here that, excuse me, that like made videos based on paranormal activity and that's all they did. Like it was like their channel, it was, it was just based off that. Gone, gone, deleted. Now, I would, I would understand that, you know somebody making a couple of videos here and there every now and then every once in a blue moon about some paranormal shit but not all the goddamn time i still don't know how youtube let this shit uh slide and again with uh number five four number f sorry but again, with number four, like, I'm with you. So, all of the noises and all of the, all of the, uh, yeah, all of the noises and, 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 and words being exchanged and, and stuff like that and, 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 and all the, everything that's going on that you hear and see, don't say, is it me? Or is that you? Bruh, I'm right in front of you. Like, you can clearly see me. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not moving. So why would it be me if I'm right in front of you and you can see me? You're you're a dumbass. <laughs> this, this, this left nostril, bro. But after I, after this, I'm gonna blow my nose. Like after I'm done with the uh, video. I don't understand how some people can just do this. Like, like, like do this for a very long time. I don't understand that. Like, you've been doing this since you were 10 years old? And how old are you now? 20? Like, bruh. What is so, what, what, what is it about the paranormal activity that's just like, that gets people, why, why do y'all like it so much, bruh? Like, I kind of, I kind of find it hard to watch at times certain videos like these, right? Because they're like, they're really scary. I cannot imagine myself actually being in there like during, during like one of those videos, like in real time. Because best believe if I went to an abandoned place or a paranormal or haunting or haunted a uh, house or whatever. And I just saw like a, a random doll in the middle of the room. I'm I'm hauling ass. Like I'm not about to stay in there. I'm not about to touch it. I'm not about to do anything like that. I notice it. I see it. And I'm like, nope. Let me get the hell on. Point blank period. Bro. Like I'm not sticking around for me to get clucked. Number two, bro, you're clutch for who the hell puts a candle on a stove? Who the number two? Go to number go to story number two. Who the hell puts a candle on a stove? Whether it's electric or, or gas. Like, who the hell, bruh? It was like somebody said it was like your girlfriend set you up or some shit. Like, who the hell puts a candle on a stove? Jesus. But cluck all these paranormal activity channels. I promise you. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.